This lesson, this lesson will help you understand the principles of drill shaft construction using fluids to maintain the stability of the excavation during the entire construction process from drilling the hole to completion of concrete placement. The proper use of fluids to maintain stability of the excavation is important for construction safety, to avoid the potential impact on adjacent structures, to maintain the integrity of the bearing formation, and to provide structural integrity of the completed drill shaft. This lesson will focus on the overall construction process with drilling fluids and a more detailed look at specific properties and use of different types of drilling fluids is provided in a separate lesson. Drilling fluids are used in different ways for a variety of drill shaft applications depending on the soil and groundwater conditions, the size and depth of the drill shaft, and the complementary use of casing for support. Fluids can include water or water mixed with additives such as minerals, normally bentonite, or polymer. The additives are used to help contain the fluids within the hole and minimize fluid loss through seepage out through the borehole wall, thereby allowing the positive head pressure to be maintained. Water mixed with additives to alter the fluid properties is typically called a slurry, and the construction technique is sometimes referred to as slurry drilling. As we discussed in the introduction, fluids help to provide stability by counteracting the head pressure of the groundwater that would tend to flow into the hole. If the soil were sandy, the inflow of water that you see here in this photo would cause collapse of the hole. The seepage that you see might appear to be small in volume, but the pressure could be detrimental to the stability and tend to wash out uncemented soils, especially around the bottom of the casing. Loss of soils at the top of the rock near the bottom of the casing could produce a void outside the casing, which could result in ground subsidence or loss of support around the casing. Seepage into the hole during concrete placement can adversely affect the quality of the concrete. In these situations, water should be added to the excavation to counter this seepage and protect the integrity of the fluid concrete mix. With the concrete placed using the underwater trimming technique that we'll talk about shortly. As a general guide, seepage into an excavation which exceeds more than one inch in five minutes is considered excessive and the hole should be flooded prior to concrete placement. Stability is enhanced by a positive differential head pressure when the fluid head within the hole is greater than the groundwater pressure in the soil. It's the first rule of civil engineering. Fluid flows downhill and so when the fluid in the hole is higher than the groundwater it will tend to flow outward into the permeable soils and exert a pressure at the borehole wall due to the seepage gradient. Water flows out into the sand too quickly to maintain this gradient, but the addition of minerals or polymers to the fluid help to increase the viscosity of the drilling fluid so that it can't escape so quickly, thereby concentrating this gradient in close proximity to the borehole wall. The steps in the process of constructing a drill shaft using drilling fluids for stability were described in the introductory lesson and summarized as follows. Excavate the hole while maintaining a positive fluid head pressure at all times. You can see this worker adding fluid to make up for the volume of soil that will come out on the auger. Step two, clean the hole and prepare for concrete by removing any loose debris from the base of the excavation and by cleaning the fluids to remove excessive suspended materials. This photo shows a clean out bucket that's used for this purpose. Step number three, inspect the excavation to ensure that the base is sound and the fluid is reasonably clean. You see in this photo a downhole camera which is sometimes used to confirm that the excavation process is producing a satisfactory result. And this photo shows an inspector testing the fluid to confirm that it is reasonably clean and meets the specifications on viscosity. More detailed 
information on these tests is provided in a subsequent lesson. Place the reinforcement, centering it into the hole, keeping the cage free of distortion. This will keep the cage in position so that the concrete cover will be provided after concrete is placed, and also to, pre to prevent dislodging soil or debris into the hole after you have just cleaned it. Next step, place the concrete using a trimming. In this photo, you see a trimming into place and the concrete is being delivered by a pump line into the top of the trimming hopper. The trimming has to be watertight, as you can see with this sectional trimming that includes watertight joints, each joint containing an internal O-ring seal. The workers here have even covered the outside of the joint with a plastic wrap. A separation device which is often called a plug or a pig or a rabbit, is placed into the trimming. And this device travels down the pipe ahead of the concrete, isolating it from the fluid and minimizing the exposure of the concrete to the drilling fluid. There is unavoidably some exposure as the concrete flow is initiated at the bottom of the hole. But the contact between concrete and drilling fluid is minimized by maintaining embedment of the trimming below the rising surface of fresh concrete. Fluid is pumped off and sections of trimming are removed as this operation continues, all the while keeping the trimming at least 10 feet or more embedded below the top of the fresh concrete. And as the concrete placement is completed, the top of the concrete is flushed or else dipped out so that a small amount of contaminated concrete is removed. Finally, any temporary casing is extracted as necessary. You can see the vibratory hammer extracting casing in this photo. And then clean off the top of the concrete surface in preparation for the connection to the structure. In order to control seepage into the excavation, it is necessary that the hole be filled to a sufficient level to counter the groundwater and therefore one must have knowledge of the groundwater head in the soil or rock. See the lesson on geotechnical information needed for construction. Everybody needs to understand what the conditions are like. Where slurry is used to stabilize a drilled shaft excavation, it's necessary that a positive fluid head be maintained at all times within the hole so that a stabilizing differential pressure in excess of groundwater head is provided. An excess head pressure of 10 feet or more within the hole above that of the natural groundwater is often sufficient to provide stability through granular soils. Slurry with a higher viscosity than water is typically required to maintain the positive head during excavation because water flows out too fast through permeable strata. A mineral slurry can also have a density that is a bit higher than that of water and that can contribute some additional pressure as indicated in the equations on this slide. Regardless of the calculated stabilizing pressure, it's important that the drilling operations and the tools be used in such a way that the pressure reduction, that is the swab pressure, below the tool during withdrawal does not cause a loss of positive head in the hole. This is discussed a bit more on the lessons on tools and techniques for excavating. A surface casing is typically used to contain slurry and allow the hole to be filled to the proper level. The need to maintain positive fluid head can be a challenge and influence the construction methods when the groundwater is very shallow. As the excavation advances and the volume of the hole increases, it's necessary to continuously add slurry in order to maintain the positive head. An oversized second surface casing, like you see in this photo, may sometimes be added to provide a reservoir for extra fluid volume. In this way, the level at the surface doesn't go down so much as the excavated soil comes out.
When groundwater is very shallow, it may be necessary to elevate casings above the ground surface to maintain positive head. Artesian groundwater, that is levels above the ground surface, can pose special problems to construction because of the need for elevation to achieve a positive head pressure. You can see from this photo that elevated casing complicates the construction. Imagine if the casing had to be elevated by 10 feet or more, as is sometimes necessary. In the next video lesson, you'll learn more about the different types of drilling fluids, how each type of fluid can be used to maintain stability, and some of the considerations in the selection and use of different fluids.